Welcome to the Living Word, the teaching ministry of Pastor Fisayo Adeniyi, lead pastor of the Ransomed House Lagos. Get ready for enlightenment, encounter, and impartations by the Word. Be blessed as you listen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Bible says in Psalms 89 verse 14, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your truth. Mercy and truth go before your face. I want to put this on record. That I am not a part of the shame and the sham happening in this country. Listen, folks. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundation of any truth or any government that will make sense. Righteousness and justice. Mercy and truth go before their face. Scripture says that we are under one shepherd and under one tribe. I have been imagining and I've been thinking if I was an Igbo man in the city of Lagos. Or I'm an Igbo man in Nigeria today. I think that we have been totally unfair to people who are like that. And this is not just about politics. I was supposed to join a couple last week, last year, I couldn't go. It was my daughter marrying an Igbo guy. Absolutely no issue. Today they are in the U.S. with their first child. Now we can marry each other. We can fellowship in church. But when it becomes politics, we cannot see face to face. It is not politics. It's the wickedness of politicians. Right? If I'm being recorded, it's fine. It's the wickedness of politicians. Right? And, and we must understand that we can't call ourselves believers and be fighting for a nation that is ephemeral. Meaning that no matter how long you live on half, it is not compared to the nation above. Therefore, our allegiance must be to the lion and the king. And the lion says righteousness and justice must be the foundation of the throne. Mercy and truth must go before the faith. When people tell me which part, I don't really care. I can, I can throw shades and all of that. I've, I've done politics before in school. It's a game of numbers. You may have the right plan. If they win you, they have won you. Because people come out and vote. It is who they want. It is not that I have the better plan. It is at the final analysis about the people. And so when you cannot represent a people that did not vote for you, it's a problem, right? And so the first law of democracy is that we all have a right to cast our vote. It's a shame that today people are even afraid to come to church. And it's not this church. It is as I come, I saw churches almost empty. And that tells you that there is a war. Because there can't be peace. People in your state are in church. They are in church because they, at least they were allowed to vote. Let's say the truth for ourselves. And the truth is that I am a Nigerian. I'm an educated Yoruba man. I'm born again. I'm a Christian. And I'm exposed. Because I've left the shores of this country. And what we have is a sham. And as a people, we have to apologize and say sorry to the people who we have hurt. And to let them also understand that I am not part of them. Are you following what I'm saying? When one of sell properties, we said, to, we don't, I, I was saying this, I was going to say this to you, and this is very important. You think it's part of the message, it's part of the message. The standard. Listen. If my dad's property in Ibadan is to be sold, I am going to be the one to sell it. Because my brother is not here. Are you following what I'm saying? If somebody says, it's 10 million he wants to buy. And somebody else says it's 12 million he's going to buy. My brother will say sell to the 12 million without asking for the tribe. Why? It's money. If even Ausa man brings the 12 million, we sell it and we walk away. So when it comes to business, you apply for jobs, you never ask who is the CEO. You don't care. You care about your money every month. I want you to look at your neighbor, I bought to eyeball. And I want us to look at people here. You see, some of us are Yorubas and we can seem very privileged. Let me say this to you. Lagos is a Yoruba land. But every opposition is not Igbo. I didn't vote yesterday because I had seen in a vision that they were going to, I was going to be attacked. So I told my wife I wasn't going anywhere. And 5 p.m. after they voted where I was supposed to vote, they came and destroyed the place and attacked the people. 
I know myself, and you know me as I'm preaching to you that I'm a very passionate somebody. I might decide to want to do, and you understand what I'm saying, and then you will come today, and maybe somebody else will preach. What am I trying to say is that we must say to ourselves, this is right. Because when they start coloring things, you don't know what right is. This is right. This is the definition of wrong. Politics is a game of numbers. If APC wins, they won. Leave it like that. He might say, Kony, best interest. Ogba, the people voted for him. That is what is right. That is what democracy is about. It's about the game of numbers. Right? Listen, if God says your future husband is an evil man, and you decide you are not marrying him, I'm telling you. And if God says that your next one is an Awusa man, because you can't be Christian, and your allegiance will be to him. It must be to Jesus. It must be to Christ. Scripture says the foundation of his throne is mercy and truth. He must go before us. All right? So you are going to look at that person, especially if you have Aousas here, Ibos. I think we have some job people here too. Where are you from? Um, Edo. Baby and George. All right, so what I just want us to do in one minute is I just want us to just go around all five persons and say you are my family. All right. I just wanted to set that record straight and to ensure that the people who are in this church understand what right, truth, and justice is. Are you following what I'm saying? Lift up your hands and say we declare peace in our nation. Prosperity in our palace. We declare peace in our nation. Prosperity in our palaces. Peace in our nation. Prosperity in our palaces. Peace in our nation. Prosperity in our palaces. In Jesus' name. Amen. So you know what I stand for, right? That 20 years from now, some of you have become politicians and are doing answer. I will call you out. Are you following what I'm saying? I'll call you out. How can you stay in a nation like Kano, Kaduna? People want to vote and folks will go there and be there. Kind of nonsense. You can't. I think what Jonathan I was saying yesterday that you can't lead the people who don't say they don't want you. It's not that, it's not that, it, like, like they say, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. I, I saw somebody, they stroke the back in Port Harcourt. The kind of blood coming out in Port Harcourt. I'm saying, are we in a niche? Are we just atlas? When blood means nothing to us again. When I was growing up, blood means something. Somebody died in the school, we may not even have school. First Peter chapter 4, verses 10 to 11. As each one has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Look at that verse. As each one has received a gift, note the word receive. Note the word a gift. Note the word each one. Minister it to one another. To one another. You see, as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, let him speak as the oracles of God. If anyone ministers, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies. In all things, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ to whom belong the glory and the dominion forever and ever. I let the church say, this morning, I'm going to be teaching you on stewardship of gifts and calling. The worship of gifts and callings. Father, thank you. Because the entrance of the word give light, give understanding unto the simple. As simple folks, we've come to learn at your feet. I make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of your people. After now, make us better people. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, first Peter chapter 4. Don't be distracted. Look at me. You don't need props. You need me. All right, the props will teach you. I can go and sit down. We'll all just look at the props together. Amen. First Peter chapter 4 and then verse 10 to 11. I want to teach you textually this morning 
textually, textually. Uh, so I'm going to stay on that verse of scripture. That's what it means. So I want to explain that verse of scripture to you, First Peter chapter four, verse ten, so that after now you will know it. Glory to God. The Bible says number one thing. There are five things in that two verses of scripture. So if you can get those five things, then you will understand what we mean by stewardship, even of gifts and of calling. Bible says everyone has received a gift. What does it say? Everyone has done what? Has received a gift. The question is, can you give what is not your own? So you came and I borrowed you my suit. And somebody said, I love your suit. When you wore it, I said, can you give me? Can you give the person? Why? It's not your own. I thought already, it's not your own. You actually borrowed it. Amen. Have you been in banks before? Those days we used to all go to banks before all these apps come. Up. And then you don't have a pen. And see somebody say, can you borrow me your pen? But you actually borrowed the pen from a sister. So when they say, can you borrow me the pen? You say, it is not my own. I actually borrowed it. Why? Because what is not your own, you don't give it out. Because what is not your own, you do not have the right over it. The Bible says, as each one has received, that means that the person who gave is the one who owns it. Do you understand that? The person who gave is the owner of it. So, as everyone has received a gift, who is the owner? God. So, everyone has received, no one has nothing. <laughs> Do you understand that? Everyone has received it, no one has nothing. We own nothing. All we have is given to us to manage. Let me say this to you. There is no shared apartment in God's kingdom. Somebody following me? Uh, you understand that shared apartment, right? It, it makes it breaks it down. There is no shared ownership in God's kingdom. No sinton jeko ownership. Nothing like that. You know why? He is the owner of it. There are no partnership, no additional signatories. You know when you open joint accounts? They say two to sign. This one, there's no two to sign. God owns it. God's, God owns the gift. It is not your own. He owns it. Now, do you know that owners of properties hire property managers like Escort to, and Kodu to come and do what? Manage our property for us. It's not their own. So if I call George and say, ah, Baba Kodu, can you manage this property for me? If I now get to the house and I saw that he has pulled one side down because he does not like how I built it. And then he now turn and build another one. And I'll come and I say, I told you to manage it. And in the list and in the agreement and conditions and contract and covenant of management, I did not give you the right to pull it down. But if it is my own, then I go there, I pull it down. If I want to pull it down every day, I can do that. I remember when I was serving in New York, there was a church called Power City by Abel Ramina. That church reconstructs their building every year. Every year they extend it. So they buy the property next to them. They buy the property next to them. So when they started, they started one place. And so they begin to pray. So the, the street is power city. God, Lord, the street is power. That's how I confess to. Oh, Lord, we get it now. So they keep confessing. And then somebody in the next day, you are disturbing us. Can we tell it to you? So they have to break down their building and then extend. So that they have now extended into the whole street. At the time I was living, they are bought so every year because the people who thought they were not at risk, they were eight houses away. They thought they were not at risk. But by the time that the thing was coming to them, they were already planning that these people, they have even become nonsense. So, and then you can also sell at double the price because they are ready. It's not money, it's not the problem. It's our house. So you get out for us. Why? Because it's their own, they can pull it down. But managers cannot do that. Listen to this. God created the house. And God gave a management to it. The name of the management is not called with humanity. So that everything God had, God had given you and I to manage on his behalf. So you own nothing. Somebody say, I'm very creative. Shut up. When did you buy it? Somebody say, I love your energy. 
You don't even have that energy. You cannot, if you have that energy, you will be able to sell it off. Because you will become a reproduction site for the energy. But it's not yours. Somebody gave it to you. And the person gave it so that you can manage it. Listen, God is a just God and he has ensured that in this kingdom, everyone has received something. No one has received nothing. That's what that verse says. As everyone has received. Everyone. So it does not matter whether you come to church and you think you are not of value. I remember when I was growing up in the Christian faith, I, I, I was in a church uh, where there were only three departments. Right? I don't know whether you've been in that kind of a church. If you are not singing, you are in ushering. Do you understand? Uh, if you are not singing, you are in ushering. Is there even a thought? There, there are people who... There's no prayer. We, I can't even remember what's prayer. I don't know. It was two, and then the third one were the people counting money. And you can't touch the people. You can't join them. It's by invitation. So every young person, as we graduated, even from the youth, uh, from the children church, we had two choices. Either choir or hush. At that time, my face was as hard as anything. I knew that if the first of all saw me as a contact in community church, they would go back home. But I knew I couldn't do hush. I couldn't do hush. I was left with choir. Imagine how, how perfect my voice was. The harmony was great. You see, we were the people who they could not put in front of the microphone. When they say mass choir, we were the mass. We are not the choir. There is a choir, we are the mass. In that kind of a church, you will think you don't have any gift. In a limited orientation, you think you don't have any gift. But everyone has the gift of management, of caring for people, of loving people. All right? So I'm going to get four persons who are going to preach this sermon together. They are going to be on this stage for the next 20 minutes. Hallelujah. Glory to God. People who think I'd, I have already mentioned the name in my head before I even came here today. Tony, please come out. I, I knew, I knew you are surprised. Come out. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, you are wasting my time. Why are you encouraging him? Yesterday you were here now sharing testimony on this pulpit. Come. Uh, no, Jesus, don't me, come. Are you following me? They are come. We we'll pray together. It's going to be an awesome day. God's presence. Hallelujah. Toby. Don't worry. You can, even you can't run out of this. Is this the end of the pool? There's no way you are going. All right. So we said three. There's four we need. Four we need. Four we need. What you look to that side? You are still looking there. Stand up. Does it say you see? Why are you doing like that? All right, so. God looks at you and says, okay, there is a gift that I have. I want people to have sense in this generation. I'm talking about spiritual sense, right? God knows there is wisdom needed to navigate a generation. There is going to be knowledge needed for a generation. And God looks at Tony and says, so you carry it. It's your tool. You carry it like it. Is. Don't worry. Leave the paper. If it falls, it's okay. Right? So he now said, okay, now this guy will wear suit. All right, so he now said, look at you. This is another guy. So he gave it to you. And so you can't be quiet. There are going to be ideologies. There are going to be people who are going to have strange beliefs from doctrines of demons. You are going to be the one to counter those doctrines. If you keep complaining about those doctrines, they will not go because they have an agenda to run. God has given you his agenda and he has equipped you with the skill, but it's not your own. So keep it. How do we keep it? So he said, okay, there will be pornography. There will be a lot of agenda, nudity, craziness. I need people to act in my own 
way they give me. All right? So he said, ah! The devil ran away in heaven by saying, warning. So the way songs changes people and affects every culture can never be estimated. It's great. So God also needs his own people who will also sing his song with the same level of temerity, excellence, and grace. So God gives you a song. Now, notice something here. The first one is that all of them has what? Is, a, is his gift different from a gift? Talk to me. Now, God now says number two thing that Peter said in 1 Peter chapter 4. Don't worry, they are just like my man who comes. You enjoy this, thing, all right? That's why you should be fit. Glory to God. All right? Hope everybody. You follow. First <laughs> Peter chapter 4, verse 10. After he had said that, you, you know what I'm saying? After he has given them, he now said they should do what? Minister it to one another. That word minister there is the word service. It means serve it. Therefore, when you go to a restaurant sometimes, they say, who is ministering at this table? That means who is the steward for this table? So God says, minister it how? He said they should do what? They should minister it. So the gift of acting is not for you to sleep at home. The gift of teaching is not like, ah, what? Revelation. Oh, that is not the idea behind the teacher. He's supposed to do what? Minister. Look at him and say minister. So God's primary idea is that you do what? You minister. So look at your life today and ask yourself, have I been ministering what God has given me? You know, people come to church and say, wow. See, this place is dirty. This, see the sound. I tell people everything you can notice wrong in the place is the answer to it. I've discovered that no matter how bad sand is, some people cannot even hear it. When you say somebody has gone flat, you say, flat? How did they build the house? They cannot even tell. Are you following what I'm saying? Because they cannot hear it. So second thing is what? Minister. Number three is to what? He said to minister it to one another. The gift of God is primarily to be served in the body of Christ. He said to minister it to what? One. That is why it is bad to take God's ability and go and be using it to sing in a club. Or to be dancing it with a pole in a nice club. No people dance it on a pole. Like your body. When you're not a monkey. Do you see what I'm saying? That tells you that it is not the problem of the gift gifts or the giver of the gift, it is a misappropriation, abuse because purpose is not known. The purpose of the gift of God is so that it can be served in the body of Christ. God God can be edified. When the teacher does his work, I can read your status and say, who, who, who? Ah, did the Bible really say that? Instead of him saying, Gamato, it's not helping anybody. I've read the Bible to 200 times. I gave back to me. Sorry, see, they gave back to me. They didn't give back. But you see, that tells you that he's not using it. Many of us have the gift of prayer. You do nothing about it. You don't pray. Some of us have gifts to manage, to sing, to plan, but we do nothing about it. Finally, no, not finally. Number four, our service must be proportionate to our God-given ability. Remember the story of the talent? Somebody had five, somebody had two, somebody had one. Is that not so? Now, look at the gift of teacher here. Is this box and this box, is this box not bigger? It's bigger than this. Is it the same gift? Yes. Is it the same proportion? No. That is why they that compare themselves by themselves are not wise. Somebody say, you know, I, I, it's just because I don't have an album. God has called you to say, I have not released a track. And you are comparing yourself with somebody who has not also released a track. 
Not knowing that though you have the same gift of singing, the proportion is different. So the proportion of this teaching man, therefore also, when you see this man probably teaching in the nations, and this man is teaching only in a local church, it does not mean that they are not fulfilling purpose. No matter the amount of fire and prayer you put in, God has given every month his lot. Let him go to fire. Let him go to mountain. Let him go everywhere. What he has given him is not the same as what he has been given. But to multiply what he has been given, two can become two, but God does not expect two to become ten. But he expects the five to become ten. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? Therefore, there's no comparison in the body. The fact that you can pray, you are an intercessor, God has caused some people to intercede over cities. Some people are intercessors over nations. Some people are intercessors over clans. Clans. That's all. You must understand what God has called you to and then you must serve. He said, let him minister according to the ability which God gives. Are you following me? You see, there are times that I've encouraged people. You know the reason people go flat in the choir? You know the reason. I tell you today. Because they are in the position they are not supposed to be. When I was in the choir, I was not flat. My name was flat. Because I was where I was not supposed to be. And the reason many people are where they are not supposed to be is because the people that have been called to be there have not taken their position. So some people have the right art. When they just see vacuum, they say, let me fill the vacuum. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not that they are saying this is my play, but they just feel this is God's house. This is family. Let me just now do it. They are not called to it. They are not positioned for it. But why? Because there is a vacuum. There is a vacuum because those who are called are not doing it. I remember over the years of pastoring, I have advised people who I see who are singing. And I say, no, don't you think you should become grass and park? Wash toilet. No, be a caregiver, join welfare. You are wasting away here. Yeah. Some people have brought, have taken them from the choir and took them to intercession department. Because they cannot sing. You see, we like to ourselves a lot in the church. You understand? How was that song? Oh, that glorious. And you know that he was sick. If I, you are just managing there. But you are people, ah, you know, church people, they are so nice that they have become liars. They don't let us break our heart. Somebody acted, you know that that is oh, not supposed to be acting. He's not. Or he said, you, for effort. We give him 100% for effort. Let him leave the place. It's not effort God rewards, it's you staying in your place of calling. You can't do well in another man's assignment. You must stay in your assignment. You know when I, you can't do well in another man's assignment because you have already failed the syllabus. Because that's not your syllabus. That's not your class. Are you following what I'm saying? Remind me of the university. I was reading for cartography. GPY 122, I think. And then somebody gave me a material. They wrote cartography on it. Those days we read a lot. Kai! I was reading it. I did not know that I was reading cartography 48472. 400 level cartography. That was what I was reading. See, I have failed. I bear obey you because I am not on the syllabus. It's not what was coming out was not what I was reading. You say, but you are preparing your head. No, sir. It is gradual. It's called cartography. No, it's not geography. It's not, it's not economics. I did it. I have never read it, done it before. I have failed. Some people have failed without even the exam because they are running at that man's way. I remember I had a brother, covenant brother, we stick very close now. And he was in, he was, he was washing the toilet. And God has called him to teach him. I told him, I said, you can't stay here. You can't. This is not where God has sent you to. You've got to move. As I'm speaking, some of you, God is telling you, you know that that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Some of you are doing design. God has called you to cancel it. Some of you, God has called you to prayers. Prayers, interceding. When I pray, there is something that oozes in a stream, a stream. Some people pray because it's stream. No stream, nothing. They are just struggling. But see, look at you. You do nothing. 
The purpose of gifting. Number five. That God in everything will be glorified. God in everything will be what? This principle should guide our use of our gift. If you deploy your gift outside of the ecclesia, that means you deploy your gift outside of the church because we will deploy our gift outside of the church, right? As some people are going to grow in management because they understand it well, right? Yeah, it's a gift God has given them. And some people are going to grow well in accounting. It's a gift God has given them. And some people are going to come and start therapies because they were actually called to be cancelled. Just what I'm saying. So they are going to use it outside of the place. Some people are going to sing. And their sing may not have a Jesus thing. They might sing secular songs. Oh, I'm preaching that. I know I'm preaching well. If you, don't, if you are thinking, why is he saying secular? Secular is different from canal. Are you following what I'm saying? Secular is different from canal. And we have missed it together because we understand these things. Because you do secular job. You do secular job. My wife works secular job. They don't pray before in their church, in their their band. They don't pray. They just stay there and do whatever they want to do. If she wants to pray, she prays on her table. She cannot even disturb other people. When he cooks, does your cooking affect, does your cooking have any spiritual thing? Like manku shaniva, you use that one as garnish. Zinia molu viada, you put oil. That one is the oil. No, 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 no. Every time you need curry, it's no, 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 no. If you are hungry and you are not eating, it's not a spiritual thing. It's food that you need. Are you following what I'm saying? So he is a chef. Are you understand what I'm saying? So these are secular. So there are songs that are not. If you listen to a Tim Dakolo song, for it, somebody is a okay. Which song do you want them to sing at wedding? If people like Tim Dakolo don't sing, so we we'll turn it will be Rams when we get to wedding. Ay 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 ay. Adurakeo, Adurakeo, ah, and then you'll be dancing with your Adurakeo. You see, the, the idea is that there will need, there is a need of a people because song is important, music is important, music also for certain settings. If we refuse as a church to minister in those spaces, the, the devil will come there, and as we are singing our marriage, we will also be hearing certain kind of words that we don't want to hear. Are you following what I'm saying? So, people have to be in that space. But how you use your gifts should be, does it glorify God? They call you to come and sing in a nude party. Hey, my have voice, I'm hungry. That hunger will send you to hell. Yeah, I'm not going to be partaker of it. But you are going to sleep. As you sleep at home that night, you are going to be seeing the image processing is deep. Is my son glorifying God? Is my art glorifying God? You're writing a play. Is my art glorifying God? They ask you as a lawyer to come and defend a case yourself. I will be defending a rapist. And you can see, because no lawyers, is is my lord. They can even knock it out of technicality. So it's not. Are you are you gonna do that? Is my word glorifying God? Is my speech glorifying God? Because some people are called to talk. Some people can talk. Hey! Oh, no, 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 no. Have you had collation here? My God. Oh, Jesus Christ. Or like elder. Those people can talk. They can. It's a gift. I remember the time that Feladroto owns this nation at the Jogula. When he speaks like this, oh! Those ones, the gift of oratory. Are you using it? First time I had Martin Luther King Jr. speak. Say, God, hey, you have gifted me. How you going? Your speech does it glorify God? Your company is it glorifying God? Your relationships are they glorifying God? Your status are they glorifying God? There's a lady I I, I muted, I blocked her. She used to be a member of this church, but she moved. So I now saw her. I, every time I see her, start, I say. You know those statues that can move you from the heavenly realm to the earthly realm? And she had done it consecutively like three times. I will be spiritual and then I see status. And then suddenly, I say to myself, they're blocking. They're blocking. You see, there are people you should block because their status does not glorify you. Does your phone, the content of your phone, does it glorify you? Sister, 
Does your work, does it glorify God? Finger, those words, does it glorify God? Do you understand what they showed us now? So he, he, he has been given, but it's not his own. You see, when God gave you a gift, he did not really quit ownership. He only gave you management. Dear prophet, it's not your own. Prophesy! You can't use the gift of prophecy without the giver of the gift. Because people have stood up in a generation like they are now the God over the thing. No! You are a man. Without even the best of man, no matter how anointed a man of God is, without God, he becomes clay. Clay! Are you following what I'm saying? Fancy. No worry, you can go with it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now, what is the word gift? Look at him and say, he just did the first feeling. All right, what is the word gift? Look at him and ask that question. What is the word gift? This is not iPhone, no. I hope you know. What is the word gift? In 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, the word used there is a Greek word. We are going there today again. This one is, is simple. It's the Greek word charisma. Now you can say it's simple because you use that word charisma. Don't you use the word charisma? That's the word charisma. And we're so used to that word. And yes, you can say charisma, charisma. I remember when I was in 300 level, University of Lorraine. Some 400 level guys came to me and said, we need you to run. This is politics. Thing. Then we need you to run for presidency of this department. And I, I said, but there are, there's somebody, there was this particular guy who has been saying he will run for presidency to the level. You know, some people, they have planned it. In fact, it's like, that's the reason they came to university. I'm telling you, they want to be politicians in the future, so they're already planning their CV in that way. So the guy, I said, ah, but this guy was going to run that. He said, no, he doesn't have it. I said, what? I said, why are you asking me to run? He said, because you have charisma. Honestly speaking, that was the first time somebody was telling me I have charisma. So I asked them. I said, what is charisma? Ah, the guy gave me an answer I know. He said, charisma is something that cannot be defined, but when you see it, you know. You see that that is deep. And here, they were referring to actually the dictionary meaning of charisma, which is a special magnetic charm or appeal. So you see, it is actually when you see that you will know. Because it's a magnetic appeal. It's a charm. Something like they say, Washington ass. You understand? Tom Cruise. DiCaprio. It does come in. Oh, the guy carries himself. This is magnetic. That's the kind of guys that some guys, guys don't like. Because they can fight girls. If you fight girls with them, now wahala, because they, they don't even have to talk. The way they even look, the charm. Do you, do you ladies understand what I'm saying? The magnetism that they carry, they have an appeal. That's the dictionary meaning of the word charisma. A personal magic of leadership arousing special popular loyalty or enthusiasm for a public vigor. Like a Barack Obama. When Obama, I don't know whether you were young when Obama was in, uh, one or one. Ah, glory. Nigerians were not going to vote. And you know what? They were not going to vote. They took it personal. They took it past. They become, Nigeria became Democrat because Barack Obama was running. And it was the appeal. Very young guy, looks so cool. He dresses, wears suits, he will even wear tie. Sometimes he wears shirt and he, he rolls his shirt like this. And then he comes in and he, he doesn't look a book, no teleprompter. And the guy keeps talking. Hey! Everybody was a Barack Obama guy. Everybody. And he, he came with, yes, we can. Yes. If you hear anybody say, yes, we can, that's where he came from. Barack Obama, you want the appeal, the charisma. You may not like with Obi, but you see, they don't give people money. And somebody enters road, and people are plenty like that. If you are running against him, you will hit him. Because you pay people for that. 
That's what some pastors are. That is why it is dangerous sometimes for a single lady to be close to the pastor. Because he will be judging every other guy that comes with the pastor's appeal. It's not like my pastor. I thought that I would be smooth talking like my pastor. Your pastor talks. That's his job. That's why he's smooth talking. He's been learning it. He's been doing it. He's smooth talk. That other guy is looking for money. Oh, so he might have money talk. You can't judge him by that. Oh, he doesn't pray like my pastor. Your pastor is supposed to pray, man of God. Are you following what I'm saying? He has an appeal. That's charisma. But that's not actually the original meaning of that word charisma. The Greek word charisma actually means favor or to favor. That's what the word charisma means. Comes from the, or a gift, favor, which in turn comes from grace. It means that what God has given you is going to make you exceptional, make you different. Do you understand what I'm saying? It is a favor of God. You didn't work for it. You didn't deserve it. But what God has given you will count you out and separate you from other people. Is somebody following what I'm saying? All right, so you can direct movies. Somebody cannot direct. He looks at you and says, you are special. Just what I'm saying. It, it's the gift that makes you favored. It's the gift that makes you special. You took the mic and you start singing. And everybody say, anointing is here. Or you are canceling somebody. You didn't know what they say. You say, you know what? You, when you spoke to me, it changes my life. And you are wondering, and you are wondering, let, her, let him be. And you are wondering, what's going on? Do you understand what I'm saying? You're wondering, what's going on? What's going on? That's what you are thinking. What did he say to me that changed my life like this? It's not what he said. It is the grace that follows what he said. Oh my, you know, as I'm preaching like this, it's not everything I say. Somebody has received what he came to church for. It's just one word that has stayed with you and it will refuse to leave you. In English, charisma was originally used in Christian context to refer to a gift or power bestowed upon an individual. Can you see that? By the Holy Spirit for the good of the church. Bestowed upon an individual by the Holy Spirit for what? I can't hear that. No, for the good of your pocket. For the good of your life. For the good of the church. That's the original use. That's where charisma comes from. When they say charisma, they look at somebody who is operating in the gift of prophecy. Somebody who is operating in the gift of knowledge. Somebody who prayed and things happened. And they say, wow, this guy has it. He thought what you thought was difficult. And then he broke it down from scriptures. And then you say, no, 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 no. This guy has it. That's charisma. They are saying that he has a gift. There is a favor upon his life that counts him out and make him different. The next one is that grace or gift signifying extraordinary power. Don't forget that power is the ability to do, enabling them to serve the church of Christ. So what do you have power to do? What do you have power to do? What do you have the ability to do? So, you know, me and Tony, we are in this together. So Tony, come to the front. Now, we're there here today. Together today. I want to explain because I love explaining things so that you will get it. How many of us have gotten me thus far? Glory to God. Yeah, somebody have gotten you even use drink to push it down. Glory to God. When I'm looking at you, I need somebody, Abby. I need somebody. Ellie. The church works and the church operates after the model of a family. So when God starts a church, when God equips and calls a people in a church, what God is doing is actually presently bigger than what the people in that church represent. Can I say that to you again? When God starts a church, God starts a thing called church, what God is actually doing and wanting to do surpasses what the present people who started it or are in the auditorium that present time represent. What God wants to do is a movement. What God wants to do is a generation impact. What God wants to do is to nurture and raise and build and affect culture. 
So, but what God has is that he has ca- encapsulated all of that into a vision. Like a family started. Like marriage, marriage, you are wearing white together, husband and wife. Glory to God. That's very deep. Amen. Hallelujah. So, this is him. He's the head of this family. But you know that he represented just a man and a season. And the fullness of time, maybe 100 years. And that is the one. And then God now creates a vision. That's why I tell people, when you want to start a home, you don't start because you have a wife. You start with a wife and a vision. So that now, this is the vision of God. God want to raise generational millionaires. God wants to raise a prophetic lineage to a people. God will call him and put that vision. He only represented a time in space. He will only be available for 50 years. But what God has said is that through their union, there will be fruitfulness. And children will come forth. We will also be a voice of that prophetic utterance and prophetic mandate of God for their generation. So that everything God starts and God plans does not end with a generation. Let me give you a scriptural example. If you have met Abraham, when he left home, Bible says, I will make you the father of many nations. He looked like father. He looked like father. That's why I said they have thought of him. Is him or you? Do you understand? Father of many nations. When you see Abraham and Sarah on the field, in the desert, you will not know that they would be the father of, there will be a lineage of Zuckerberg, right? Do you know that Zuckerberg is, can trace his lineage to Abraham? Are you following what I'm saying? Do you know that, I, I even think Bezos too can trace his own. They are Jewish people. They can trace their lineage to Abraham. Who would have thought that that thing that happened Thousands of years ago, we have impact even today. But he caught a covenant. And that covenant. What I'm trying to say is God encapsulated it and put the vision. Now listen. He by himself can never become the fullness of that thing. No matter how gifted and anointed he is. Oh, so Bishop Oedeko is very anointed. I agree with you. But no man does great things for God by himself. No man. You do not have the capacity to do that. Tell me your favorite pastor now. Who you think God is using heavily? Give me one. Huh? Please. Please use my, give, give me another name. Give me another name. Irene, right? Pastor Irene, right? Apostle Seman. Beautiful. Now, you've given me two names. Apostle Seman, Pastor Irene, Apostle Irene, right? Two of them. Now, do you know that they do so much work, right? So, you see videos from them. You see them preach and you see editing. All right, so they've started churches. Some of uh, Apostle Irene have started churches. But he doesn't pastor those churches. He can't pastor those churches. Some people are pastoring the church. In fact, where he preaches, he can't pastor the church. That's the island church. He can't, because he cannot have that time to do that. So for that thing to come forth, he will need other people in that assembly to step into the fullness of that view. Is somebody understand what I'm saying? So that vision is not just a man. Vision is a generation. Somebody following what I'm saying? Vision does not, you, you see, your calling, the reason you are looking at your calling and you are taking your gifts so small is because you don't understand that you are not the only singer in your generation. In your bosom are other singers. My family, my mom prophesies. She's a prophet. She's not a prophet, she's a prophet. When my wife saw them for the first, after she expressed them for five years, she came to a conclusion that they are witches. When we were pregnant for the twin, we called. She called. Go me, I don't call. She called. And she said, ah, we are pregnant. She said, yeah, we know. We're twins. You know they can say, we know you are pregnant. You can. But they told her, ah, immediately, they were twins. They will tell you. I remember my dad called me one day. He said, you want to travel? He said, ah. He said, well, che, how many people are fighting in that job? In that organization? I said, <laughs> La Christian Marty was in me. Larry or Taloa. I said, oh, where will I start from? 
He said, no. He said, you're not. I said, I know what you're calling me for. He said, I saw you. I said, don't worry, I won't die. I was supposed to travel. He said, don't go. He said, I know. I paid for the conference. I just dashed them the money. Because I won't get there if I go to. Are you following what I'm saying? Why? Because if now, that's not where I'm going. In my family, there are three girls. Two of them are certified witches by my, by my wife. Because they will tell you how it is. I'll give you just one story to prove that God works in a generation. Are you following what I'm saying? My immediate sister. My, my name is Isaiah, right? Her name is Isola. She was in a campus fellowship in Four Square. Are you following me? And so God was moving. They were praying. And then my sister started. The thing, the spirit of the fathers came upon her. And they said, man of the Lord is here. I have asked them, how do they see things? I, I, me, I'm a prophet, but I don't see. I know. They see. It's a different level. He said, ah, ah, ah. Brother Femi, ah, Brother Femi, why, why, why did you do that? Why did you sleep with Sister Tayo and we're in the fellowship together? Ah, why, oh, why? Sister Tayo was the general secretary. Sister Tayo was the choir coordinator. She has not ended. She, ah, 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 Brother Dari, Brother Dari. It shouldn't be you. Masturbating at night, it shouldn't be you. Ah, uncle. And she just, by the time she ended and she came out of this place, nobody was praying. Nobody was praying. Everybody, people are crying. There's people who shame at court. You know, when they serve you, people who shame at court. The only people who were standing, they could not even talk loud. You know why? Because they, they are heroes. You know how Kamazaji worked. General Secretary was supposed to be a senior guy. They said, ah, oh, So even them, they are looking. So everybody was so calm. After four weeks, he called home. And they called me and said, she's been attacked. I said, ah, you don't press of subjects with prophet, Madam Zola. They don't work it this way. Emma <laughs> Dajoru. What am I trying to say? If they tell you this is it, I tell people, if they say this is it, and I tell you this is it, they are home. Are you following what I'm saying? They, it's not Balu Balu. It's a generation. And you can prove it, that my daughters will be prophets. Because I understand that God works in a generation. So I go and I cultivate anointing that I have to do that. You know, I'm very true. For the day I took this man to Rio Kekoli, he almost died. You don't know what that means. One day we'll go on a discussion. If you last two days in Oreo Kekoli, if you last two days, ah, then you are in Georgia. George, you know what I'm talking about. For food! What did you eat? For food, the man of God was taking orange. For food. The first night I slept on a cold night. Feet up! The staircase to get to the top of that mountain, I think they said it was 300 stairs. When I got there, you know what are you looking for? God. I remember the, the place I was praying. I was not doing that because I, I, I understand that there are prophetic things that can only be in prophetic lines. You don't like CAC people, but they have the quality, the prophetic. They are not joking. They don't do gaima no oluwashe, oluwashe, oluwashe. The difference between you and them is that they have relationship. You have revelation. You have revelation into God's word. They have relationship. About we do like this. God just told me. Pass of life. They tell you that. If a Pentecostal pastor say otherwise, go and do that. Because what they say, God just told me. Ah! 
Do you understand that spiritual generation is started the exact way marriage is started? Therefore, you must also take marriage very carefully. It's not just a union, it's a spiritual union. You are taking into your lineage a path that the spiritual generation and lineage has also taken as a path. A covenant you are inheriting. Therefore, if you never, if you don't have sense that you marry, your generation won't have sense. You, I can tell it. If I see some family and I see their mothers and parents and I see their co-sense, it's a generational thing. What will serve God? One will serve the Lord. It will be accounted unto him for a generation. I would rather marry somebody with an inheritance of a godly heritage than marry somebody with an inheritance of money. Because I've seen that the rich also cry. So Jesus, though was God. Now let me prove this to you in scripture. Jesus, though was God, do you know he was limited? I'm trying to say even him cannot do anything by himself. He needed, he needed people. Do you know that Jesus, though he was God, he was limited? He needed a Philip. Philip is an evangelist by calling. It was him who found Nathaniel. It was not Jesus. It was him who found Nathaniel. Do you know that it was him who took the gospel first outside of Jerusalem? He went to Samaria, Acts chapter 8. When the Greek came to Bethsaida in John chapter 12, it was him they went to. It was him. Because why? He was the one who would take the gospel far. You see, there are people who you need them. Let me say, Jesus needed Judas. He needed Judas because of his prudent and accounting skills. It was only Judas that saw that that perfume was expensive. Why are you wasting it? That's prudent. Even though you can say he was stealing it, it's prudent. He needed the boldness of James and John, the sons of Boanegas, the sons of Thunder. If fear comes, they'll come up and say, hey, pastor, we can do it. I remember when we were going to Milan in one day, me and Desmond. And we were cleaning up for fuel. The Nigerian can just mess you. Pay off for fuel. And after one and a half hours, I was trying to go to the front. And then one guy just came and entered my front. Hey. <laughs> Forgot that that was the call of God. I came out. I hit the car. Come on, move back. Let things be done in order. You know, I told you that election, they would have killed me by God because I will not keep quiet. He said, No, go back. And the guy just opened the car. He said, You touch my car. Ah, he neared me. Honestly speaking, honestly speaking, <laughs> in my heart, I thought that much. They blow me by. Honestly, I, I said to myself, but oh, you know you will do your bad, you know your bad people. We can't talk. Ah! No, no, it's not possible. I said, what do you mean? The guy was coming close. Ah! You know, I had a son of Buanegas, the son of Thunder in my car. That's what he just came out. He pushed me. What do you want to do? I said, Oh shit. <laughs> Even though with the anointing, I would have been beaten. You need the sons of Buanegas if you will go for a ministry. Are you following what I'm saying? Yes, ah, uh, I was going to Ilori. Maybe it was two minutes. I don't even. I can't remember what I was going for. See, I would have gone with this like go for the sons of Buana again. It's too ah. So when I say the guy has anger, I love it. Ah, oh, what me man? But he pushed the guy. He said, "What do you want to do?" He said, "Give me love." Ah, and as I thought, no, my name. <laughs> You can be right and you'll be beaten in the street of Lagos. I am telling you. Honestly. And you see why the ministry of John and James are important. Now? They are the sons of Buana. Yes. You also need the talk of Peter. You know he talks a lot. He will ensure everyone in Lagos know about you. If you see some churches doing well, celebration church, they have a lot of Peters. Do you know what I'm saying? On Twitter, they are talking. On status, they are talking. If your church will go far, you will talk about it. If your vision will go far, you need a Peter. Do you jump talking? Ah, you are in a church yesterday? Oh, my pastor said. Even if you hear the man Samuel, you can say, Kilo Sog. He said, he said, he said, he said. Why? Because it's a family. Nobody goes out and says, My father does not try. Father is a very good man. Are you following what I'm saying? He also needed the love and the care and the understanding of John. You know, we also have people in this church. Last week, I was not feeling fine. Right? Some of you, you I said it all, that it was God that made me breathe. None of you contacted me and said, how is your body? 
In fact, the day Desmond called me and said, I just said, I was asking, how are you doing? I was afraid. Because it's, it's out of sync with character. But you know that there's a lady here. Uh, she called me three times on Monday. Have you taken it? How are you feeling now? Tuesday, in fact, I have got to a point and say, oh, yeah, I think I have told that. We, oh, I'm fine. But you need a John to also let you know that you are valued. In a John to let you know that what you are doing is okay, on the right track. Everybody needs care and love at certain times, right? You also needed the finance. <laughs> the finance and the home and the warmth of Lazarus. Without Lazarus and some of those rich people, Jesus will not do much. Some of you say he didn't raise offering. Did he? Because people were there. I have told you people before, it is believers that make teachers prophet. You don't understand that? It is believers that make teachers prophet. Ah, when they refuse to give where they are supposed to give, and the bills of the church is rising, and he sees that rency, and he sees that his children's school fees, ah, they have muzzled the mouth of the ox because they are stingy people. You know what he does? There is somebody here. Pastor, he has become a prophet. Why? Because if you be prophesy, money will come out of me. You know, people are not poor. There's nobody who is poor. If they tell you now that you raise money, that somebody is sick, raise the money. And you know, I've discovered that people help you so that you don't die. You are not following what I'm saying. If you are sick and you need 200,000, they will raise it. They will give you. But raise 50,000 for business. You won't find it. I don't know why people love to keep people alive. Is it that their ministry should continue? I be sacrosanct and I'm dying. With hunger. They will say the Lord is it is well with you. It is well with you. The Lord feel you. The Lord keep you. It is well. Oh, she lead me here. It is well. That's the end. And they leave you alone. But tell them that they said that if I don't operate, the guy will say thank you. Because they don't want you to leave them in this world. They want you to continue the mystery together. Ah, holy Lord. Ah, holy. Do you know that if they leave Nigerians alone, they will not let people jump They We should stay here. We gather there. We die here. The person wants to die. You don't even like the person. Die. Okay, give him money for food or business so that he can make money. They won't, they won't come up. They won't talk. Put it on your status. Try it. You can do an experiment. Put it on your status and put it and say, need 100,000. Just 100k to start an idea. Let's do it. Let's try it. And see how many people enter your DM. People enter your DM normally when you post. They will do like they do not see. Some people will block you that time. Now, put it here that you need 30,000. Oh, you need 150,000 that they just diagnose you with something. You don't operate in three days. Something will go wrong. I am telling you in 30 minutes, the amount of phone calls you will receive. How far? Sorry. What did they say happen? How what kilo shelle? What did you hit? Who, who diagnosed that? What's that? Do you know what I'm saying? They want, it's not love. They want to keep you alive. Oh, Nibo, we are here. But if somebody wants to move to prosperity, let's gather money and help the person to prosperity. I'm letting you feel life so that when people do it to you, you don't get angry. It's not that they hate you, they just want you to remain alive. What am I trying to say? Your local church and in extension, the body of Christ need your gift, the manifestation of your gift for its prosperity. You know this can't tell all the belief that our church pastor is a, is a superman. Every superman you see, he has supermen working with him. Baba Deboye has a structure of millions who will lay down their life for him. When you therefore see a church that is not growing, it's full of selfish people. Fancy that. 
that that one can see. You remember Moses? I want you to get this. Are you getting what I'm saying? You remember Moses? How many of you think Moses is a very uh, exemplary leader? Gifted. Exemplary. Great guy. Did many works. Built the tabernacle of meeting. Started the law. Oh, very creative guy. It's such an humble and a meek guy. Listen. Moses did not build the tabernacle of meeting. I love it when I make some statement because in your head you are processing. The Bible says, be looking for it in the Bible. It was not in Exodus 31, 1 or 6. The Bible said, Bessalel, who was him who was given the skill, the artisanship. Himself and Oabe, yeah, that's the guy's name. They were the two guys that were given that skill and artisanship. And they said, I've called him with many other people to be able to build the tabernacle of meat. So that the pattern Moses saw, some people are going to be the one who will express and bring it to manifestation. You see that there's no Superman. Listen, to take people to bring into physical manifestation all that God commanded Moses. You can change the name Moses and put your name. Can you do that? Put your name. It will take people to bring into physical manifestation all that God has commanded George. All that God has commanded to faint. Can you see that there? It will take... So that don't think that I have to work harder. That's why a generation is killing itself. You are the CEO of your company. You are the marketing officer of your company. You are the creative director of your company. You are the financial analyst of your company. You are also the chief planner of your company. Can you see why? That's why you, your health is failing. There's something called leverage. Even if you can't afford it, talk to somebody and say, can I be giving you 5k per month, 10k per month, 20k per month? And use that time. Even if you are not using that time to make more money, use that time to rest. Look at your neighbor and say, to take men to bring into physical manifestation all that God has taught you. Finally, a good preacher, my father taught me those four times. You can see that this is not like every other church. And also, and the word, word, the word, the word will make men. If you make a commitment to do it, you will see the difference in your life. Now, I want you to talk about the types of gifts and calling that God gives. Because you see, it is not a message on calling and gifting. So I will not tell you about discovering your gift and all of that. Right? This is not, but I want to, I want to point you to certain gifts. And that's, that's why it's not going to only be about the five-fold ministry or the 12 gifts. Uh, that, that the Bible talk about the 12 spiritual gifts. I'm, I've tried to see how I can inter, intermingle them, um, into something that can work for all of us. Uh, there are scriptures here, Romans 12, 4 to 8. We are supposed to actually read Ephesians 4, Ephesians 4, 8, and Ephesians 11 to 16. But for the, for time, but for time, for time, let's just, uh, let's continue. All right. Or can you give me 4, 8? Can you, you can't, all right? So let's just continue for time, right? Um, so when you get home, please read Ephesians 4, 8 and Ephesians 11 to 16. You can circle that if you are taking it. That's like, you have to read it, right? Fine. Okay. Um, let's move on here. Number one, I, I, the, so I want to just point you to certain gifts so that you can know. Because some of us are here and we don't even know what our gifts are calling me. All right, so that you can know. The first one is the gift of administration. It's the ability to steer the church or a ministry toward the successful completion of God-given goals. Uh, if you are called to this, you will have the skills for planning, for organization, and for supervision. Some people are, are just have that gift to supervise things. I mean, something is going on. 
and you can just go ahead and just supervise. Number two um, is the gift of an apostle. God calls a person and sends him to a place with the gospel, right? Myself and my wife and my children were enjoying our life living in a uh, learning. And God sent us to Lagos, right? Um, so if you are saying, okay, apostle, that's what it means. Like, the pastor was also sent, right? But you don't see me call myself an apostle. Maybe not yet. It's there. You may not also have heard of people who take the gospel from different cities to different cities. As apostles, some people also take that office of apostleship. And what do they do is that um, um, that office, they, they provide leadership and guidance for many churches, right? Um, somebody like Reverend George Adeboe, somebody like Bishop David Oedipo, right? There are churches like um, um, Dunami, um, um, I've forgotten it. Salvation Ministries, um, Dunamis, Paul and Eche. Um, there's, I know, there's also a church in, um, in Edo, in, in Delta State that I know is quite popular, um, that's also like submitted to him. So what he does is that the pastors come to him and then he provides leadership and guidance, even for what God has called them to do. He helps to steer it. So you will sometimes discover that um, some of those churches, um, you will sometimes discover that some of those churches, when they receive something from Shiloh, for instance, um, they then go to their churches and start also having the word for the year that looks like what is happening. Baba Deboy also has, we can't even talk about how many people are submitted. Um, I'm, they are even like a nation submitted to him. Now I'm saying, because Bishop himself, the Bishop of Bishop, uh -huh, they are all on that. Number three is what you call discernment. Uh, the wisdom to recognize untruth from truth. Uh, when a man asks what is called the discernment, the signing of spirits, uh, he can be able to say, this is error. You know, there are times that I, I hear certain people say certain things. Are you following me? Uh, there are times I hear certain people say certain things. It does not just agree with your spirit. Have you, have, have you ever had people say things like that before? I mean, you're hearing a pastor. He might be popular. And then he said something. And then something rings inside of you. <clears throat> Even though when they ask you to explain why you think it is wrong, you can't. For something in your spirit just rings a bell. It's out of alignment. Uh, some people have discernment. I want to talk about discernment of spirits. So that you can even know the spirit of pleasure, right? So somebody is performing miracles. It doesn't mean it's the spirit of God. Uh, it can be the spirit of the devil. Um, I remember Reverend George told us a story about how he was in a place and a man of God came and he was saying, you. And he was saying things like my sister was saying, you, this has happened to you. you and the man came to him. And what there and he said, I locked up the spirit. I said, Lord, I block it. Nothing is six right now. And then the man, mm. Oh, shock. <clears throat> oh, shock. The man left him and went somewhere, somewhere else. You know, that's because he had discerned that this is not, this guy is not using the spirit of God. Number four, you have what is called evangelism. All right. Um, evangelism. Can we concentrate? Evangelism. The ability to successfully communicate the message of the gospel to unbelievers. Ability to successfully communicate the gospel to unbelievers. You just have a passion to win souls. Right. You see somebody doing things that are not right. Just want to talk to them about Jesus. You want to talk to them about God. And um, don't forget that all of these gifts are not given in polished ways. You still have to improve them. You have to work on them. You still have to train. Uh, some, people have, some people have the gift of exaltation. Barnabas was called the son of encouragement. That's the meaning of the name Barnabas, the son of encouragement. That means somebody who comes in, maybe you just lost your job, you just did something, and he came, comes in and encourages you. He just speaks to you. Some of us are encouragers, right? You, you don't need to look for the microphone. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, you are called to encourage. Or your friend calls you and says, I, I just feel better. The mood he came in with and the mood he's living with. That's, uh, uh, I was saying something different. All right, so number faith. Next one is faith. Perhaps people with this gift have such great confidence in God. They have such great confidence in God and his ability that they can just declare and it is so. <laughs> Somebody say God can heal. You believe that? Right? You believe that? Imagine yourself preaching. And somebody had a shit good eye. And God says, shout it out in the microphone. That hand shout it out. Will you do it? Will you do it? Because if you shout, and the hand does not come out, God told me one time to do that same thing. I dropped my foot in my phone like this. Went to the guys here, shouted, Oh, Fred! Fred, he called. 
still remain. I came back. I said, God, he said, is that what I said? He said, that's what my faith can carry. He said, you are a sincere person. Continue your ministration. I just continue. But some folks, men like Smith Hugo's words, the gift of faith in operation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Chris, you are kilo men. People who will just look at me. And she will, out! They will not even shout it. They will, they will say, increase the microphone. I shout it. And the ship will come out. Because it is not you. They know it's not them. It's God that said it. But it's called the gift of faith. Therefore, don't blame yourself for not operating. It's different from the biblical nurturing in faith. Where you build up yourself. That's different, right? Number f- uh, and people like that, are ah, they important also in the church. You need people like that. When I come and I say it is time for us to leave this place, God is saying we should go and get our own place. And then people go and come back. And then I say, Escort, what did they say? They said they said it's 200 million. I said, Come on. Somebody will say, the people with the gift of it say, Pastor, if God has sent us, He will give us the land. He will give us the land. There are people like that. You call it crazy people. They are not, they believe. Let me say this to you as your pastor. In case you don't know, if you hand, you to. If God tells me one billion, I will go. Just let him know that you can know that Christ be here. So that when I say it, you will not die. You follow what I'm saying? If I can come to Lagos with 10,000 naira, that's my landlady there. My landlord is behind me with 10,000 naira. I cannot now believe that he say one billion. He say for you to believe I will not go. Ah, we go! If he does not provide, I have said I told you. It is not, you see, it is not my name on the line. It is his name on the line. I've never taken my ministry too personal. You see, that's how people feel. You take your ministry too personal. It is not my ministry. It is God. If we can come here and there's no money to pay, I will sit down. Don't think I will stay in my house and be afraid. Hey, I shame or not. So I will be at the door. Downstairs. I'll be telling you. Hey, Sorry, God did not provide. It was God. He did not provide. I will ensure that what I said to you, I mentioned God five times. So that it comes to head that it is him that did it. It's, it's not me. Do you understand what I'm saying? Ah, Pastor, why there's no, no, there's no church? God did not provide for this. I prayed, we believe God, and God did not turn up. He did not send the money. God is the one who did not allow us to have this service today. Next week, maybe when God provides, if he provides, then we'll be here. But don't forget, God is here. But I will ensure that I let you know. Because when he pays, I didn't say I pay. It was him. God. Are you following what I'm saying? Take your ministry to personal. But that one is the gift of giving. I want to hand it in the next six minutes. The Lord, give me grace. Those who have this gift are particularly willing and able to share their resources. I remember a lady one time who had 1.4 million in her And she gave 1 million to the gospel. Let that sink in. Another time, he had maybe 520,000 and 520,000. They have what is called the gift of this. If you call them and say, this person is going through this, they will not be okay until they solve it. Or at least they do something. I mean, you already pay. If you are like that, don't worry. The provision will always come. Those kind of people who God can trust with finance, I'm still going to get to the stewardship of money. See, the more money they have, you know, stingy people will be thinking, they just, they just, but they will never have that kind of money. Because if God cannot trust you with more, it won't come. Another thing is the gift of helps. Someone who's able to support or assist members helps. Another one is the gift of hospitality. This is not cooking. That's what we think in church. Only Dana. That's not hospitality. But that's not hospitality. He's making people feel welcome, making them feel at home. Not just opening the door for them, looking at them bogishiously. No, that's not what it is. 
You smile. You made them welcome. Ah, thank you for coming. I miss you. Let me hug you. You are at home. Hospitality. Hospitality. Are you following what I'm saying? What is the other one? The gift of knowledge. Somebody who pursues an active knowledge of the Bible. The person knows scriptures. No scriptures and can explain it. Other one is leadership. Somebody who is able to stay in front of a church, a teaching elder, and direct the activity of the church. Another one is mercy. You know, those who have the gift of mercy are very good in intercession. Because they can feel the pain of the person. They can empathize and take it to the Lord in prayer. You know, it takes mercy to be an intercessor. Because, you see, that's one thing. That, that's why we don't have many intercessors. Because they think what is my own with what the person is going through. But for me to say, let us pray for Brother Tophet, and you are not dating Brother Tophet, he's not in your lineage, and you begin to pray for him. That's mercy. Other one is prophecy. I've spoken about prophecy, right? Ability to give message to other people. Teaching. Intercessory. Wisdom. As some people have run it down. I said six minutes. It took one minute. Another people, somebody else asked the gift of creative and artistic skill. Creative and artistic skill. They look at the house and they come into that house. Every time you see space, you are thinking of filling it and rearranging it. When you see designs, you, you are the one who sees that color out of place. Have you seen designs? Gabby designs, yeah. Is this green on top of lemon? Somebody says it's very colorful. That's all he sees. For you, you say, ah, is that me? But what are they saying? Are they selling land in Ekpe or they are selling the land in Ola? Where are they? This thing does not look well. Are you following what I'm saying? I think you, some of us, have been, God has called you to drama. Are you following me? Some of you, us, God has called us to dance. Some of us, God has called us to spoken word. That's what you know you can do well. You, you do it well. Some of us write. We are writers. Some of us can prove read. You didn't learn it anywhere. That's a gift of God. You are a developer. You, you, you can run programs. You understand things. Some people have been learning graphics for seven years. They are still learning it. I'm not, I'm not joking. Some people have been learning graphics for seven years. They are still learning it. Or you have that skill. This month you pick it up, you are good. Two months, you are already pro pro. What's going on? Grace has given you that attitude. Time to understand that that thing was not given by you. It was given by God. The worship of gifts and calling. You remember where we started from? The five things about First Timothy chapter four, verse ten to eleven. Talk about the giver of the gift. The gift is primarily supposed to be ministered, right? And then from that point, where do we move to? We move to definition, right? Of the gift. And then from there, we also said that God works generationally, right? Uh, that he works in generation and in times and in seasons. And that you can't do God's work alone. The expressions and physical manifestation, you will need other people. Do you understand that? And then we went back. That's summary. And then we went back to talk about the kind of gifts calling, right? And so that's the end of the teaching class. Bow down your head, bow down your heart. And I want you to talk to God and say, Lord, I will be more faithful as to the usage even of my skill. I will be more faithful as to the usage of my gift. Lord, I will be more faithful. Are you talking to God? Are you speaking to him? Lord, I will be faithful in the use of my gift. In the use of my ability, in the use of my gift, ability, I will, I will, I will do more. I will do more. I will do more. Father, we have come and we've learned that you have never given us gifts and you have forgotten about them. Lord, you never relinquish ownership. You only gave us the gift of management. Lord, the grace to manage your gift well. The grace to manage your abilities well. The grace to manage the favor you have bestowed upon us well. Father, give it unto us, O God. Father, thank you because you are good.
We exalt you because you are the Lord. Thank you for listening. This has been The Living Word. If you have been blessed by this teaching or for counseling or any other inquiry, kindly send us an email to pfa at the ransomedhouse.com or fisayoadeniyi at yahoo.com or please call 0912-772-3824. The Ransomed House, empowering people to live for Jesus.